Oh man, I love this song. Every time I hear it, I can remember where I was and who I was with. It reminds me of this. Does this sound familiar? Music is like a scent. It can instantly transport you to another time and place. I ask my guests to dish about their song with the memories that go with it. I'm your host, Tiffany Mason. I have a passion for music and a curiosity about how a song affects someone and why. Turn up your radio and let's explore Memories with a Beat. Hello, podcast land. Thank you for joining me for another episode of Memories with a Beat. Today, I have Gerard Longo with me. And Gerard, do you want to just say a little bit about yourself, introduce yourself to my audience quickly? I would love to. First of all, thank you so much for having me. Very excited to be here. Uh, I'm the founder and CEO of Underground Music Collective. We are a digital music resource and multimedia services company based here in Nashville, Tennessee, the heart of the music industry. In addition to that, I'm the host of the Quinn Spin Podcast, which I'm sure we'll get into is the origin point, point of singularity for all things UMC. And I also run our events initiative called Nash Live, where we put on local shows here in town. And we might be branching out just in a general UMC sense outside of the area uh, later this year, but I don't want to give away too much yet because we haven't quite announced it yet. But we've got a lot going on in our ecosystem. I'm an artist coach. I'm a cancer survivor. I'm Currently, as of recording in this competition with Muscle and Fitness Magazine called Mr. Health and Fitness to win 20 grand in a two-page spread. So I keep busy. There's a lot going on in my world. So. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. That's awesome, though. And I love that they all have that, that common thread of music, though. So I think that's pretty cool. And it says a lot about your business, too, quite honestly, to me anyway. Um, you guys, I listeners, I know that you guys saw the title. It's going to be uh, another song by Dirty Heads before we did Vacation, which I absolutely love that song. Ooh, yeah. Yes. And then uh, maybe you guys also know the song Oxygen or Lay Me Down. Oh, Regardless, yeah. if you like a reggae, tropical, steel drum, a little bit of rock, um, they also claim in their music some of their influence was ska culture. This is an awesome band out of California. They've released many, many albums. And so today we're going to talk about one of their songs. And Gerard, do you want to take it away and let the audience know what the song is? And then just you can really go into how you connect with this song or, you know, how it impacts your life. Absolutely. So the song I chose for today's episode was Indigo, which is off their most recent album, Midnight Control. It came out last August. And I mean, I, just to touch on the album real, really quickly, like that entire album, like, you, you know, when an album just is released at the absolute perfect time in your life, you know, and it like, it just hits like every song kind of has its moment in, in the landscape at that moment. This was that album for me last year. You know, and an album like that for me only comes along once every mm. decade or so. So it, it grabbed me pretty immediately just in terms of the journey and where I was and the things I was starting to focus on in life. You know, these shifts toward maturity that, you know, life had taken. Indigo, though, uh, I I chose this song in particular because right now it speaks to the journey of where we are as Underground Music Collective mm. and everything within that. And where I see myself fitting into that and the occasions that I find myself having to rise to. This is a song that touches on the idea of, you know, being an indigo person, being the type of person that, you know, breaks the cycle and inspires change. And I feel like, you know, with UMC, we have the opportunity to do that, you know, through our platform and its many facets, with some, which I'm sure we're going to get into. Uh, but it really is a song about not only you know, carrying that badge, but taking, you know, taking a responsibility to move things forward, to move society forward, to bring new ideas into the fold and to do so in a way that builds and inspires community. And it's the perfect song for us right now. You know, it's the perfect song for where we are. It's the perfect song for where I feel I am in this ecosystem. And it's just something that like, I look to as somewhat of an anthem in this What's been a very transformative year for myself personally, for our platform right now, it's one that I just keep coming back to over and over again. Sonically, it's got kind of the band is described as kind of having like a policey kind of vibe. You know, there's definitely that reggae influence, uh, a little bit of the hip hop influence, too, that the guys have been known for. And 
it's it's fun it's upbeat but there's also this like urgency to it you know there's this tension to it where it's like okay the time's now let's let's make that change you know there's that line in the chorus our existence has the code not to obey yes you know, the code to you know go against the grain and create something entirely new and right now i'm so inspired by that because that's the impact we're trying to have at umc and through everything that we do. So that's that's why I chose that one. I could have honestly chosen most of the songs on that <laughs> album in different moments they speak to. But right now, I feel myself so dialed into this particular part of my journey, you know, as far as like building this organization, building this company and watching it grow. So that's why I went with Indigo today. Yes. Well, I love that you're saying that this song released at the perfect time and you're seeing yourself kind of level up and that it, those are the times I think that we really connect to a song and so that you're you're saying that is what's happening with you really with the album but you know you keep coming back to this song and so normally we talk about you know memories from the past that somebody has with a song but it's almost like you're creating those memories now so in 10 years I could interview you you could pick the same song yeah. and you could talk about a lot of those transitions that you're going through now and I was actually going to ask so I love that you brought up the line about we have it in our code not to obey are there other um lines throughout the song I mean mm. I really felt like a lot of the lines really grabbed me but would you say it's the whole song are there specific ones that when you're listening yeah. to it you're like oh you know you so strongly feel and resonate with that line or those couple of lines Yes, yes. I mean, first of all, the whole pre-chorus just slaps. It's one of the mm -hmm. catchiest pre-choruses I've heard in recent <laughs> memory. So I got to go. I got to go there. That was, you know, that first week listening to the album, the part like of that song and maybe the whole album that was like just playing in my head. <laughs> mm -hmm. but, but that's that's just as a listener, you know, from an enjoyment standpoint, as far as spe specific lyrics, there's in the second verse, uh, Duddy says, and I hope I don't butcher this. It's our time to shine light upon the darkest souls. I follow those who search for more than just a common role. And that's something that resonates so much with the mission of what we're doing here at UMC, because we are going against the grain, like all of us within this community, no matter what your discipline, if you're a musician, any kind of independent creative, if you're a podcaster, as I'm sure you know, you are building something from zero, yeah. from absolute zero. I mean, 10 years ago when I launched the Quinn Spin, I mean, it was just me, a couple social media handles and a USB mic on my old Blue Dell laptop in my childhood bedroom. <laughs> like, and from there, this entire ecosystem has expanded to have all these possibilities and opportunities within it. It's an uncommon path. And it's been something that for me has just been so transformative in my own life. I can't imagine what life would be like now without this 10 years in. But also, you know, it takes yeah. a lot to follow that uncommon path. You know, it's, I think, you know, not that there's really any easy way mm -hmm. through life, but I think, you know, so often we're wired or taught, conditioned to seek this comfort in, okay, just go get a job, go get your benefits. You know, nobody gets hurt. You know, I took yeah. the leap at the beginning of 2021 from corporate America. And so far it's been for good, <laughs> you know, and I, I intend to keep it that way. You know, like <laughs> I took that leap with the intention that like, I'm going to blaze this trail. I'm going to do what I moved to Nashville to do. And it is tough. It is not an easy journey. And I always say anybody who tells you this is easy or is either naive and hasn't done it before, or they're trying to sell you something, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Well, I want to offer you a little bit of comfort. I mean, my girlfriend reached out to me the other day and said, Hey, my department has been laid off. I've been laid off. And all I could think is like, I'd have to fire myself to lose my job. Yeah. You know? And the other thing too, is like, when we have clients, you may lose a client, but you don't lose your whole business. You don't lose your whole income. You don't lose your whole identity of your job. You know, so, I mean, there is a little bit of comfort in that, that, yeah, it is hard and it is tricky and you have to grind through some of the hard stuff. But at the end of the day, it's actually more security to be an entrepreneur. It's actually more security that, you know, you're leaning on yourself. So there are a lot of benefits. Um, so I'm happy that you're seeing the fruits of that labor and that, you know, things are kind of uh, ramping up for you, which is really exciting. Yeah. And, you know, to that point, too, it, what it does is it makes you a whole lot more resourceful when you are <laughs> responsible for every single thing, uh -huh. especially like I'm transitioning out of being a solopreneur now, like we're starting to build the team around us. But like, mm -hmm. especially as a solopreneur, you are responsible for every single dollar that comes in mm -hmm. and every single dollar that goes out. Yeah. You know, over the past couple of years, like it's really taught me what this is. And it's like, OK, if I want to build what I'm trying to build, then I need to be completely focused on it. And everything that doesn't serve that right now mm. needs to go away. 
you know? Yeah. And so it's, it's been such a powerful journey. I've heard of absolutely been, you know, moments of having to swallow pride and checking egos and that kind of thing. Uh -huh. But like, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't trade anything, you know, to go through that in 21 and 22 to get to 23, where we have all these amazing things happening. I, I wouldn't trade it. Yeah. Well, I think 2020 gave us a lot of virtual resources. Mm. So I think that that is amazing. Um, I do want to go back to uh, Quinn, the Quinn spin your podcast, but yeah. really quick, you know, when you are starting a podcast or starting a business, I think there's similar paths that you're an entrepreneur. Even if you are starting your podcast, not for the sense of monetizing, it still takes a lot of the same grit, the same dedication, the same focus, the same consistency. And something that I heard a long time ago was your ego is not your amigo, <laughs> which amigo means friend, right? So yeah. we, we all, all have to keep that in mind. So if you don't mind, tell me a little bit about UMC, which is Underground Music Collective. Okay, so tell me a little bit about how you're forging paths for your clients and what they're doing. I mean, the, the whole idea of Underground Music Collective is to create a community, create an yes. ecosystem for independent creatives. We're based in Nashville, but we're not exclusive to Nashville. Okay. There was a previous period of UMC when we were a regional publication, actually. We were a local music blog in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. We were called the Lehigh Valley Underground. We're about an hour north of Philly. And I went to, I went to college in Bethlehem. After I started the show, the podcast, The Quinn Spin, in 2013, we did that for a couple of years. Then we all, me and my co-hosts, you know, started going in separate life directions. I go out to Bethlehem, get a job, get a couple jobs. And I'm like, all right, <laughs> let me start a blog around this podcast because I still yeah. wanted to keep going. And so we covered the local scene, you know, 2016, 2017, most of 2018 up there. But then it, I just kind of felt this pull, right, to like go to a music market, learn what I didn't know and mm -hmm. start building these pipelines back. Now, we rebranded in November of 2018, a few weeks before I moved to Nashville, but I made a deliberate decision to not put Nashville in the name. And the reason for that is because we're based here. Music City is our home for all intents and purposes, but we can be anywhere. I had that vision. OK, so do you create indie cultures or indie communities sorry um like okay you know somewhere in the midwest and then somewhere in florida and then somewhere in another state or like explain to me what this means these communities that you're creating right so it all started with the publication itself with the blog so reviews features we put out our weekly umc20 playlist new episodes of the quinn spin you know that kind of thing where we're interviewing people we're featuring the music we're highlighting the creative work that's taking place so that's what the episodes are about on yeah mo mostly interviewing independent creatives uh, i'll do solo missions as a matter of fact as a recording i just released one of those today just talking about the journey itself once in a while my old co-host and i'll also hop on zoom and just have some fun you know and just throw up an episode for old time's sake uh <laughs> the, the, gr yeah, the great cool. thing about the quinn spin is it could be anything that it's ever been and that's you know it's kind of like i always say musicians have music and i have that that's my art form and i can make it whatever i want mm. you know it's it's fun for me in, in that regard and you know it's it, it's my one opportunity a week to like play in the sandbox and just throw it to the wall in, in essence. But, <laughs> but, but, you know, going back to the whole ecosystem of what UMC is. So, you know, it started with the content, you know, which of course started with the podcast first. We've expanded since we have a lot of educational opportunities that we've rolled out over the past few months. Um, our Wednesday wisdom series is one where we have uh, industry professionals who have been there and done it. You know, these folks are authors. They've worked for major companies within the industry and they're writing. Each one of them takes a turn every Wednesday to give us a monthly column based on some topic in the industry. We just had a great one go out this week. Uh, Sasha Walton, who is a music business strategist and author, she just uh, gave us some marketing tips on the UMC blog. So we have those educational opportunities. We have uh, virtual panels that we've been putting on over the past few months. We just had a really good one in April for Jazz Appreciation Month. We're planning more uh, for the rest of the year as well. T we took May off from that just because we have so much else happening oh. in May, including the creative agency we just launched, which is another thing. Um, we So I take on client <laughs> work, you know, as far as social media, coaching, you know, photography here and there. But I've noticed over the winter, my bandwidth was running out, you know, and it's like, okay, it's time to scale. It's time to bring people in. Yeah. So what we've done 
over the past few months is we've recruited a team of UMC verified creators. So these are folks uh, well-versed in photography, videography, graphic design, web design. We even have a couple of music instructors. And what you can do pretty much is you can go through our platform, you can book them through us, right? And not only will you get great work that's vetted and vouched for by UMC, but then once the project's completed, we're going to pump it out through the blog and through our channels. So you get a little extra marketing and promotion in addition to the service that you've commissioned from the verified creator themselves. So these are just a few ways we're building community. Uh, we're developing even more. So another thing we've launched is our creative agency at UMC. That was actually just rolled out on May 1st. And what that is, is we have a team of we're calling them UMC Verified Creators. Uh, these are folks well-versed in photography, videography, graphic and web design. We even have a couple of music instructors on the team. And basically what this came from was the fact that I'm taking on client projects, right? It's just running out of bandwidth over the winter, you know? And it just came time where I realized it's time for me to focus on the bigger picture of what UMC is besides. So I'm like, well, how do I do that? I need help. I need people, right? So in order for us to grow and scale the business. So... We spent the past few months recruiting these folks. They're vetted and vouched for by our platform. So they're going to create with the people who come in and use our services, right? And then those completed projects then go and they're featured through our platform. So through the blog, through different features. So if you use our people, you know, use their services, you also get a little extra marketing and promotional boost through the UMC platform in addition to the service you commissions. Yeah. I want to get back to the song a little bit and I want to talk about some of the lyrics. Yes. But I thought so many of the lyrics were so good. I'd love to go over them. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm really glad that you said that an indigo because I guess I didn't think of it. I mean, I know like the indigo girls and I just didn't think of it as a persona where they're kind of trying to break the mold. Mm -hmm. So I love that this song is about that. And that mm -hmm. gives me even more like... I don't want to say urgency, but more excitement to listen to the song a second time through a different set of ears, knowing that this is person who a person who is trying to break the mold. It's the indigo and, you know, trying to move forward in a positive light. So I, I love that you explained that because I guess I didn't make that connection. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's you know, it, it did, I think, really take a few times for me listening through to really like, you know, to really understand it too, because you know, you hear a new song for the first time, uh -huh. you're just kind of getting a feel for the album, you're getting a feel for what what's there, and then you start to take that deeper dive. And but this one was really one that just stood out to me right away, you know, as far as the subject matter, as far as how how it moved me and how sonically it serves the the theme, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah, you look at that, you know, you look at the chorus, you know, which it starts off with the chorus. Let it flow the indigo. We start to change the way. They don't know what we can show. The world is ours to change. Like, hey, we have a blank canvas if we so choose to see that canvas as blank, right? We can create something out of nothing. Absolutely. And something that, you know, from one creative to another, we've had to do with our respective platforms is create something yeah. and go and take the lumps, you know, and learn along the way. And it's <laughs> the type of thing, you know, it does take you on a journey. The creative journey is an apt phrase you know that's widely used and it's for mm -hmm. a reason it's because it's wild and it's unpredictable and it's up and down you know there's no straight path to success there's no straight path to fulfillment success might even look like something completely different now than it would have five years ago and you know so to bring bring it back full circle again yeah. to indigo like that's what that song represents to me it's like you know we have a chance at umc to lead that charge. And it's a unique opportunity we've never quite had before. And if we don't capitalize on it, we might never have again. Like it just feels like a moment in time, <laughs> 10 years in the making. And it took 10 years to get here. And like, we've got to take advantage of this moment. We've got to, because like, if we don't, yeah. like who knows when or yeah. if it's ever coming again, you know, and in a life sense, you never know what can happen. I'm 36, which by no means am I old, but it's like, I'm further into life. And like, you know, your priorities do shift and change over time. And, so, you know, mm. where the platform yeah. comes into that for me, again, personally, is like, OK, how can I build something, you know, personally that gives me the life that I want and, you know, that has the impact and allows yeah. me to serve in a way that I want so I can then show up to all areas of my life to the level yeah. that I'd like to. It's all part of the journey. Yeah. And that's the thing. We come back to that word journey. Yep. It's there. But, you know, if we can, you know, inspire people on that journey based on what we've learned and based on what we have to share, then 
that's what we want to do here at UMC. You know, it's so it transcends music in a lot of ways to me at this point. You know, even though underground music oh for sure name like it it transcends yep. like just one particular artistic medium and it's like okay how do we tell our stories and how do those stories create the change that we want to see in this industry in our society you know whether that's just within our circles or something much larger right yeah and so we are all we all have a chance to tap into that uh indigo energy as it were, <laughs> and and be that change, and be the person, be the person that breaks the cycle, that gets off the merry-go-round and creates something new. And so that's, I mean, that's really, I mean, that's why it speaks to me. And then there's this thing in the pre-chorus about like, uh, I see through the ether and reach you to greet you. It's like, come on, come with me, come with me on yeah. this ride because like it's so much, it's so fulfilling, it's so enriching over here, you know. So yeah. you know, just. Again, having the lyrics pulled up, like I think, you know, I see certain parts of these lyrics and it's like, you know, that's how it feels in this moment of this journey. That's how it feels in that moment of this journey, you know? Yeah. Something that's popping out a little bit to me is that um, you are, you know, seeing these these unique individuals and helping them to to succeed. Right. And so in the lyrics, looking at the lyrics, I see seeing something beautiful inside a grain of sand. Mm. I see these, I see the usefulness of something and I take a stand. Yeah. And so you're saying that this song relates to so many aspects of what you're going through. And that's exactly what you're going through. You're looking at these unfinished versions of these people and helping to kind of polish that and send them on their way and make them a little bit more successful. Yeah. You know, and it's, it's interesting that you pulled out that line too, because that's one <laughs> that just like, hits me in a very specific way right now uh because that grain of sand metaphorically to me stands for that you know the point of singularity that mm. usb mic and a laptop and i'm going and trying to find bands on twitter so i have a show and i have something to talk about <laughs> the first those first couple episodes you know i i was telling um because again scott my uh co-host scotty rock and uh my, my buddy JD, like they joined me on the OG family episodes where we get together, like, you know, the old days of the show on Zoom. And I was uh -huh. telling them about that line in particular. And it's like that grain of sand is that moment. That grain of sand is when we would go to the pre rehearsal rooms at the county college where we did community theater and record episodes like it started there from this. And it's just like bloomed like, you, you know, and it's in that moment of like nobody else around you can see it hardly at all like the potential of what you have you know but it, i see the usefulness of something and i take a stand it's like i see something in this and back in 2013 2014 did i honestly know what it was absolutely not but there's for some reason over the past 10 years there's just been this 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 just inkling to just keep going on this path no matter what's happening in life it's an exciting time and to think of where we started and to think of all that we didn't know <laughs> like i keep laughing uh because coming up you know over the next couple of weeks we actually have a pretty big opportunity that we'll be going i'll be going to new york for and you know it's this type of opportunity that back in the day me and scotty would like walk around New York and be like, how do we get in there? You know, how do we do this? How do we meet mm. these people? And like, we have an opportunity just like it that we're invited for. Now we don't have to go to the security desk and drop off a demo of our episodes. You know, <laughs> like we actually get to go in there and it's like to, to see mm. that happening from where this started and all that we didn't know. I mean, we were just a few underemployed community theater kids, <laughs> you know, <laughs> trying to find their way post-grad, you know, or even, you know, if they were still in school at the time. And it's like, to see that to like everything this has grown into, it like blows yeah. my mind. And like, of course, you know, we're going to keep going, but you know, it does get to that point where it's yeah. like, if it all ended today, look at the past 10 years and look at everything we've done. Yeah, yeah. I'm so impressed that you, you know, get to have a seat at the table of something that 10 years ago, you're just kind of, you know, mulling around in your brain, like, how do we get there? And that's a that's a really big deal. So congratulations to you, Gerard. Thank you. Thank yes. You. Got a podcast? Are you loving it, but not loving how much time post-production takes? Or maybe you just have other tasks calling your name a little bit louder. Virtually You can help. Check out virtuallyuva.com, supporting you in all things podcasting, like editing, show notes, audiograms, and much more. See the link in the show notes.
They're waiting to give you back your time. And on that note, let's get back to the show. Is um, Dirty Heads a band that you have followed since they were came into existence, kind of? Or is it one that's more caught your ear recently? Pretty much since their first album. I think I was a little late to the party on that first album. Okay. Which was Any Port in a Storm. I, I became aware of them after college when I started, you know, listening to terrestrial radio again, because it was what was on in the car when I was driving around for freelance sure. gigs. And so, you know, the song Lay Me Down, of course, was the, I don't know if it was the first or second single, but it was the first one I ever heard. I'm like, ooh, I like this. Okay. I'm a beach guy. Yeah. You know, I grew up yeah. in Jersey, spent a lot of time at the Jersey Shore. And then I just kind of did my own digging from there, have just followed them from there. And they've become one of my favorites at this point. Um, yes. Yeah. It's them and Our Lady Peace. Our Lady Peace is probably my number one of all time, but Dirty Heads are, you know, becoming a 1B, you know. And what I really like about them, Dirty Heads in particular, and Our Lady Peace, really any any artist that I follow for a long time, there has to be an evolution there, you know. Mm. There has to be, like, like, I don't want the same album 10 times. You know, some <laughs> yeah. fans do. Some fans are like, play the old stuff. You were only good on your first two albums. I'm not that guy. As a matter yeah. of fact, I tend to gravitate toward what's newer, more so than what's older. Well, of course not, because you like indie music. So that would make total sense that you like people doing their yeah, own thing. Yeah. And like the fact yeah. that like an artist doesn't have to stick to a particular sound as long sure. as that thread of what they are and who they are, that essence mm -hmm. stays present. Like I think that's the more important thing, you know? Mm -hmm. What what connects in the first place? You know, what connects you to an artist? Because you know, the sound might bring you in a particular song, a moment in a song might be the thing that catches your ear. But beyond that, if it's gonna, if it's gonna stay in your consciousness, then it's gonna stick around for a reason beyond that song, that moment, you know, I think of, yeah. you know, I think of like Dirty Heads, or I think of Our Lady Peace, Bon Jovi is another big one for me. And the song that brought me in is the song that I often forget to listen to at this point, you know what I mean? <laughs> or it's like, oh yeah, I remember when that song brought me in, but there's so much more that I've since had a chance to dive into and even going to like back catalog stuff, you're mm. able to dive in and just really make it your own beyond just what the radio is pushing out to you. Yeah. I think that was always frustrating for me when I was younger mm -hmm. that you could get these albums and you could listen to the whole album and like, two other songs you would totally love but you would never catch it on the radio right yeah and like you're waiting around all day on the radio <laughs> you're waiting to hit record on the on the cassette tape you know and you hope you catch it in time you hope there's enough room on that side of the cassette tape to catch it like yeah, right. <laughs> i remember those days you know i grew up in the 90s like that's how we did it yeah. you know that's how we made party mixes was to just record songs off yeah. the radio as we were able to catch them okay now gerard mm -hmm. i have to know when you used to buy a cassette or a CD and there's like the pamphlet in, on the inside, right? Would you pull it out and you had to learn the lyrics or were you just happy to listen to the song and kind of dive into that later? I'd always pull it out. I'd always pull it out and I'd like follow along. Okay. Well, what are you paying attention to? The lyrics. The lyrics. Okay. I mean, I'd, I'd read the liner notes too, but like, you know, I, the first thing I always went to was the lyrics to the point where like, You'd buy some and the lyrics weren't included and I'd be disappointed. Oh, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Yes. yes. Lyrics, I, was, I ended up being an English major. So like, <laughs> you know, words have always been important to me. Yeah. And so like, it was definitely important to me to, you know, go in and just see what I was listening to and be able to follow along and learn that, you know, because also I don't want to get them wrong. You know, if I'm singing it or, you know, like, <laughs> or if I'm communicating what I like about this song and I'm giving somebody the wrong lyrics, like, I don't I don't want to do that. I don't want that egg on my face. So, yeah, yeah, I would always go straight for it. Oh, my gosh. That's super funny. Well, is there anything more that you want to say about this song, Gerard, as we kind of come to an end here? Uh, check it out. Indigo Dirty Heads is the band. Check out the whole album, Midnight Control. I mean, it uh, it was it was definitely tops for me in 2022 one of my favorites of all time you know like i said just one of those that was just really immediate for me yeah i can give some other song wrecks on that album if you like i mean <laughs> um shade is a beautiful serene like just really just touching moment on that album it's a second to last song and it's you know about just finding that moment of peace through all the chaos and you know, that was something that, you know, right after that album came out, I had a chance to go to Cape May, New Jersey, where I go to end every summer and just standing 
standing on the beach at Cape May Point, like that song was just kind of washing over me in my mind. Mm. Just, like, and you know, 2022 to that point had been stressful for a variety of reasons. And I'm just like, you know what? I'm here. I'm present and I'm ready to go back to Nashville and I'm ready to build this thing. Like that song in particular, that if I had, if I had a chance to pick two off that album, that would have been my second because mm -hmm. that one was like my green light of, okay, go back to Nashville and build this thing. And, you know, ever since then, you know, it's just been a new level of focus and appreciation for this entire journey, you know, and that's what that song represents to me. Little Things is another one on that album. That's, uh, you know, it's, it's about appreciating all the little things in life and like, you know, getting that perspective from those so then you can show up and, you know, do the thing, you know, and yeah. build, what you, build your empire as it were. So, yeah. Yeah, just a lot of songs on that album really resonated. The one we're talking about today was Indigo, but go check it out, Midnight Control. It's been out since August, and it's on all of the streaming platforms. Okay, well, you guys heard it. Those are some of the deep cuts that we need to go check out. Mm -hmm. Also, you guys, make sure you check out on Spotify, on Apple Music, and YouTube. You know the links are in the show notes for you to check out this song along with all the others, and of course, all the information about Gerard. I hope that you guys were able to, you know, glean a lot of information from Gerard. And I hope Podcast Land that you appreciate all of the, they're not old memories, but they are still memories that Gerard has to this beat. Podcast Land, thank you so much for listening. If you had a few memories of your own pop up with this episode, make sure to take a screenshot, tag me on social, Tiffany Mason, or virtually you, and share those memories. I know y'all are listening, and I'd love to hear the memories you were reminded of with this song. Also, would you do me a favor and share this episode with someone you think would enjoy it? This is the best way you can help me to grow my audience. Can't wait to dive into my next guest's memories with a beat. Hit subscribe now. You don't want to miss the next episode.